What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're continuing our homepage refactor. And in this video, we're going to build out these two cards here, which look very similar and are both pulling data from Firestore. You can see there's actually no good data on this one, but if we did add some saved values here, you'll see now this has seven, which is the current daily budget, which is simply taking our total that we have saved and dividing it by the amount of days in our trip and then telling us how much we have saved per day, which would be essentially telling us how much we can spend per day based on what we've already saved. The start date of this trip, however, is currently today, so that's why it says zero, but you'll see if this date was in the future, it will not be zero and it will read how many days until the actual trip. So let's get started building these two components here. So far as we've been building this, we've just been adding to our column here, and that's been great because we've only had full width elements. So now we're going to add a row into this. We want a row with two elements in it, and we're going to do that part here, and then we're gonna create two new widgets that can pull that data for each of those specific ones. So firstly, let's create a row. And now the row can have two elements. So we do need to create those elements. We're going to create one that's going to be days until trip. And just like these up here, it's going to take the context and the trip. And then the second one, which we'll copy and paste this, is going to be called the current daily budget. So these are pretty similar and you might be thinking we can just build one widget and pass it the data for these, which is definitely doable. Where I ran into some problems doing that is the width of the text is not exactly the same. So you could do it with conditionals within that widget, but I found it to be easier to just build two smaller widgets that are that are kind that share, I guess, probably about 80% of the same information, but since they're both so small, I think it's fine to build them separately. Uh, let's comment out the current daily budget and build the days until trip widget. Create the new widget in our home views here. All right, so this is essentially what that is going to look like. Let's actually just duplicate this and change the name of it. Okay, so we have both of these now and we will have to import them into our home view. So we have just these two files. Um, neither of them are returning anything yet, so nothing is actually going to work. In fact, the app will crash. So let's return from both of them just a card. And now we're just returning a card from both of them, so it is going to load up. Now, Let's go ahead and fully build out the days until trip, and then we'll do the current daily budget one right after that. So the card is relatively simple. It's just going to have two, two elements, the total number of days, and then that title below it. So let's start with a container on the, in the card. And the reason we're gonna use the container is so that we can set that background. So let's use that box decoration Similar to what we've done in the video when we were building this top part up here, we're gonna use a linear gradient. Let's set our gradient here to a linear gradient. And then we give it two colors. The We're gonna use light blue and blue accent for these. Now, the way we're going to set these gradients is it's going to go from left to right, and then this one is also going to go left to right, but the color in the middle is going to be the same, and then the color on the outsides are going to be different. So we're gonna begin with the alignment of top left and then end with the alignment of bottom right. All right, that should be working, but we can't see it because we don't yet have anything in our container. So let's set the child element in this container and then we can give it a column because we do want those two elements the first one is going to be the trip, which we can do in text. The first one is going to be the trip, uh, days until trip. We do have a get days until trip method already. If you go into our models and our trip model, you'll see we do have this get days until trip, which is simply just going to give us the difference between the current time and the start date. We do want to add a little bit of style to this as well, just making it white and a font size of 60. 
So if you save that, you can see we have our card here and it has that zero value. The reason for that is the date is actually in the past. So today is the 23rd of January and the start date for this is the 17th. So if you look at the logic of this, it is checking if the difference is greater than zero and if it is, it's just going to return zero, which is good, that is what we want. Uh, however, let's see what it looks like if we were to change that date. So in our trip here, if we find the start date, and if we just change this from the 17th to sometime in February and update it, you'll see now we get a 32 because the trip is February 24th, which is going to be 32 days from right now. If you've been following along and paying attention, you'll notice this actually introduced a new error here, which is we now have a negative value here. The reason for that is our end date is actually after, our end date is actually before our start date. So this actually would never in theory happen because I just changed the date in the database. However, we should never have this happen. So we can change this slightly and make an int value here and do the total. And then we can just check if this total is less than one, which would mean it was negative or zero. And then if it is, then we're just gonna set the total equal to one and then return that total regardless. So you see now this is probably just gonna drop down to 50 and that's fine. Again, this is nothing that should ever really happen because technically these trip dates the start date is like a month ahead of the end date, which would never really happen. So I'm also just gonna go into the database here and change the end date to be sometime in March. Uh, everything looks good, but this is another kind of just logical catch just in case something like that somehow does happen in the database. We won't be showing them data that doesn't make sense. But anyway, we now have this 32 value here, which is good. Our trip is 32 days away. So back in this card here, we also want to add a text value. I'm just gonna copy this and modify it. So you can see that is starting to be built out more like that. Let's add a bit of padding around this column because you can see everything is kind of right up to the edge here. If we add some, if we add some padding and let's actually give it a good bit, so 20 for the padding. That card is looking a bit more like what we want it to look like. Next, we need to worry about if this number was very large. So if you imagine, if we had a bunch of zeros on here, which this is rare again, but you'll see if it's large enough, we will get that overflow issue. And once we add that other card here, we're never actually going to have it even overflow as far as half the screen. So this is kind of an easy fix as well. We just need to wrap this in a widget, uh, wrap this text in a widget, and we're gonna use that fitted box, and then we can give it the box fit of fit width. So if you save that, it still has the overflow there, and partially this is because of how this widget is being built on the home view. So if you go back to the home view, you can see we just have this row with two children in it. If we wrap these children in an expanded widget, you'll see now that the that the zeros there get get shrunk down. So if we added a few more characters, you'll see now it will actually shrink down to, to fit the screen. And currently it is taking up the full screen and that's really just because, but we don't quite have that second view set up. So that should be good, let's remove that. We're also going to do the same thing with this text down here and if you test this on a couple smaller devices, you'll notice that sometimes this days until your trip is too long and it sometimes gets cut off. So when you have text that is a little bit longer in a short or in a smaller space, which is only gonna be about half the screen, you, you do want to make sure you add this fitted box around it to keep the width or to keep it all on one line. All right, one last quick thing about this about this card here is you'll notice on this one we have a little bit more of a rounded corner. Very, very subtle, but if you want to add a rounded corner, you can do that right up with where we're setting the gradient. So this is in the box decoration here, 
and you can add a border radius and then set that equal to border radius of circular and then give it any value. So I'm just gonna do a very subtle border which, which is four, but you can see now those, that is more of a rounded card. So that looks good. Now we want the card to only be halfway on the left here. If we go back to our home view, firstly, let's wrap this other one in an expanded widget as well. And if you save that, you'll see now that the, now this one is just taking up half the screen because both of these are going to expand to be half the width each. The next thing we can do is let's actually build out this next card and then we'll finalize the style of this row. So the card here, let's go ahead and copy everything that we just coded from our days until trip and put it in our current daily budget. So doing any type of copying like this that I just did should immediately raise a red flag in your mind and make you think of how can I reuse this code or reuse this widget and not have complete copies of this code, uh, which I do think it is possible to you to reuse this code for both of these widgets. However, they are going to become so different, like all the information within this is going to be different that you end up having to create this, you would end up having to create the widget with so many variables and then add so much logic in here. They would basically say like, if it's, if it's this, if this one parameter is passed, do this thing. And if this other parameter is passed, do this other thing. And that's all definitely doable. And if this widget was a bit more uh, actually reused, it might make sense to do that. But to me, it didn't actually make sense to do this, especially because of how small this widget is. But uh, comment down below if you believe that that is a good idea in this case or not a good idea in this case. I could, I could see either one and I could definitely do another video on refactoring these two into one widget if that's something people would be interested in seeing. So now we're going to actually modify this a bit. So we're going to start with the blue accent here and we're going to end with the actual color of blue. And then we're going to change this from, actually we're gonna leave the angles the same, but you can see right now we go from a lighter blue to the blue accent and then we're gonna have the darker blue. So that is now changed so it kind of goes from this lighter blue to this darker blue and has this third color in the middle. The next thing here that we're going to change is this text that is here. Instead of this being the days until the trip, we want this to be the current daily budget. So we're going to create a new method and we're gonna call it get current daily budget. And this has not been created yet on our trip. So in our trip model, we're gonna create this new method and we can do it right towards the bottom. It's going to return an integer and it's not going to take any parameters. Now, this is gonna be pretty simple. If, the, if there is nothing saved, so meaning if this value up here is zero or null, we just wanna return zero for the current daily budget. So that is a simple check to saved here. And since we're on the trip model, we actually have direct access to all of these parameters on the trip object. So we can just call save directly. So if saved equals zero, or if saved is null, then we simply want to return zero. If it's not, then that means we have some amount saved, then we want to return the saved value and we want to divide that by the total number of days in the trip so we already have this get total trip days so we're going to use that and you'll notice this is the one that we just modified earlier to make sure that this value is a one if it was negative that actually is important here as well because now that we're using this to actually do division on the total saved value that that is more that makes this even more important to have this check in it because if we were dividing the total value by that negative number it would also throw things off 
in a way that we would not want to see. But once this is divided here, it's not going to be returning a integer, it's actually going to be returning a double. So we need to call floor on this to convert that and essentially remove the decimal points. Um, that looks good. If you save this now, since we're already calling it, you'll see six is the number here. Now that is a integer of the, of the amount of money. So how we're getting this six here is we're taking this 125 and we're dividing it by the number of days total in the trip. So the total number of days in the trip is going to be the difference between February 24th and March 17th, which happens to be 21 days. So if we did 125 divided by 21, you'll see we get just about six. Because we're using floor, it is doing that rounding for us, so it moves us up to that six value. Uh, that being said, we want this to display as money, so we're going to escape a dollar sign here so it shows up with a dollar sign before. Instead of saying days until your trip, we're going to say current daily budget. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now we have the two cards with the proper data in them. The last thing is to make this padding line up. As you can see here, that padding line's up there. And then we also want to make sure that when this number is larger, the cards themselves stay the same width. So let me show you what I mean by that. If we added a lot of money here as saved, that is that increases our total daily, but even more, if we add even more money, you'll see now, since this has gotten much larger, the height of the card has decreased slightly, and this could happen either way, if this number was much larger or this number. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure that these are always the same height Firstly, let's go ahead and add that padding. So if we go back to the home view and take this row, we can wrap it in a padding widget and then give it just a left and right padding of 15. The reason we're using 15 is because that's what we used on this card here. So we want that to be the same. Now you'll see those line up nicely, which makes this look even worse when the height of this is smaller. The way that you can make the heights of these the same is to use an intrinsic height around this row. So wrap this row in another widget and we're gonna call, and this widget is the intrinsic height. And when you do that, it is going to set the height to be the same for both of these. So you'll see these now take up way too much height. So if we go into the cards themselves, so the days until trip, and we look at how these are set up, we have the container here and then some padding and then the column. And within this column now, if we add a main axis alignment with space evenly, and then do the same thing over on our other one, you can see we get kind of a better spaced out numbers here. However, the, the height of the total card is still a bit high. These look a lot higher just because this number is so wide. So with it becoming so wide, the height of it becomes higher. If we go ahead and remove like 56, thousand and what do we have 52,000 so if we remove like 52,000 then and now we're back to like $600 you'll see these line up now so that looks more like what we would expect but either way it does work with both ways if you have more save those will just become slightly longer but they don't overflow and they still do look good because they're both the same height all right, that's going to be it for this video. We now have these two nice cards here. Like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe down below so you can be notified as soon as the next video comes out where we'll be continuing to build this homepage view.